Welcome to Crop Sense, presented by North Carolina Cooperative Extension. I'm Jacob Morgan, a field crops agent with North Carolina Cooperative Extension. Today, we have Dr. Guy Collins, North Carolina State University Extension Cotton Specialist with us. Good morning, Dr. Collins. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Good morning. Uh, good to be on the podcast today. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Guy Collins. I'm a cotton extension professor with NC State University. Uh, I work very closely with Dr. Keith Edmiston, also a cotton specialist with NC State. Uh, my job is primarily extension work and on-farm research. And uh, Dr. Edmiston does more on uh, small plot research on stations and uh, got teaching responsibilities and all that, too. So uh, collectively, both of our programs are not redundant, but we work very closely together and uh, for the betterment of growth pursuits. We both have heavy, heavy extension responsibilities. Thank you very much. So first off, Dr. Collins, can you give us an idea of how much cotton has been planted so far across uh, North Carolina? Yeah, it varies. Uh, I've talked to some growers that are 100% done, and I've talked with a few that have yet to even begin. And most growers, I would say, are 30 to 40% done, but I would say statewide, we're probably about half planted at this point. Okay. So starting in April, the eastern part of the state got mighty dry, and this past week we've had at least five days with low temperatures in the 40s. So what effects do these dry soils and these colder temperatures have on cotton germination? Well, we have two different issues there. Um, so with dry soils, I'll address that first. When we start running into dry weather, you see a lot of growers tempted to plant deep, uh, trying to quote unquote chase moisture. And we understand the incentive behind that. Uh, but a lot of times that creates more problems uh, for the cotton plant. So when moisture is already limited, and unless it's immediately alleviated by a rainfall, when we chase moisture like that by planting deep, really what happens is we plant it into marginal moisture. Uh, so some seeds encounter moisture and are able to germinate and sprout. Uh, but in many cases, unless we get a rainfall pretty quickly, it's not enough uh, to get that seed to emerge or that seedling to emerge. And other seeds uh, don't encounter any moisture. So then you'll have staggered emergence. So when we plant deep like that, even if we are able to germinate all of them, many of them may not make it to full emergence just because of the added stress by planting it too deep. It's got that much further to travel to completely emerge. And especially if you have soils with a tendency to crust, that, that can be very problematic. The trick here this year is we also have cool weather, as you mentioned. Uh, so what we generally recommend is, is planting in dry dirt, plant it shallow, you know, half an inch deep, no more than three quarters of an inch deep. And if that's in moisture, that's great. If it's not in moisture, the next time it rains will, will be considered the, the planting date. And so, and under most circumstances, uh, that's, that's fine. But when we get a rain, when we have cool weather, that can be problematic. So it's been very much a challenging year. So to address the, the moisture situation, we wanted growers to, to plant fairly, fairly shallow. Uh, and that way, it's not an added stress by planting it too deep when we do get a rainfall. And hopefully, you'll get more uniform emergence that way. Uh, now, with the cooler weather, uh, that's, that has become problematic. I mean, we really didn't see this past five-day spell in the forecast until about last weekend or the beginning of last weekend. And uh, that is a, a separate issue. But when we have uh, night times in the 40s, that, that can be very problematic for cotton. So when we plant cotton, we look at heat unit accumulation within the first five days of planting with the assumption that cotton is planted into moisture sufficient enough to germinate the seed. And so of those five days, the first three days are the most important uh, after it, the seed is imbibed with water. And you certainly don't want uh, 
cool temperatures as cool as we've had uh, down in the 40s at night uh, within those first three days. Ideally, we would have 50 CD60s accumulated in the first five days. And our cotton plant condition calculator is a real-time calculator that uh, can help growers with those decisions. And it, it gives a five-day DD60 predicted forecast uh, at any given time for anywhere in North Carolina. Uh, for the day you use the calculator and the, the following day. And it also trigger different warnings. And one that you'll see a lot this week is you've got nighttime temperatures below 50 degrees. Now, had this stretch been... Uh, relatively short term, in other words, just a night or maybe two nights uh, with this kind of and we went in every warm soil, we might have been okay. But what we've seen statewide is our soil temperatures are just dropping daily, and that's to be expected when you have four or five nights in a row of temperatures like this. So it's, it's not good for cotton, basically. So, so what do we expect for growers who planted through these colder temperatures to see, and when should they start worrying about if they have an adequate stand or not? Okay, well, they can expect to encounter problems uh, with either germination. In, in those cases, you would dig down and see some seeds that were rotten. Um, some may have sprouted and probably have a malformed root system. And in the very best scenario, if they do get good emergence, it's going to be severely, severely delayed uh, with some slow growth. My gut feeling uh, for growers that have planted here recently in the past few days, uh, they're probably going to have four stands and would need to replant. Uh, so when we really assess that, we, we would like to give cotton at least a week before we really know what we have. Under these conditions, it's going to take quite a bit longer. So under normal conditions, at 10 days after planting, I start getting a little concerned about stands if it's not adequate, uh, and especially if I don't know the cause. Uh, at two weeks, most of the time, we're looking at a replant situation. Now, for a grower that planted in completely dry soil, planted shallow, and they have not yet had a rain, they may not have to worry about anything but they, they probably want to dig down and scratch down to look at those seeds to see what they're doing. A lot of folks received a little light rain over the past two or three days at some point or another, and that may be enough to, to germinate the seed, depending on how much we receive. Uh, so with that said, uh, they need to really evaluate that. But everybody else that planted in the moisture is probably going to have uh, severe stand loss and, and looking at, at the need to replant so, so within about 10 days after they planted, they probably need to be out there making, trying to find seed, see if it's germinated, see what the stand looks like. Yeah, that's like. right. I would be out there looking for sure at 10 days. And probably two weeks after planting, initially, I would be making a decision on whether or not to replant. And, and what, what do those numbers look like as far as, you know, percent of stand or... Or how many, how, how big the skips are, or what would be your recommendation on, on where that number would be as far as when you should make a decision to this needs to be replanted, or I think I can work with this with this stand that I have. All right, so Dr. Emerson and myself are currently wrapping up some research where we collaborated uh, with Dr. Jason Ward and uh, BAE, and uh, looking at this very thing. So our recommendations have historically been based on previous research that was done uh, in the early 2000s, and a lot has changed then. Seed cost has changed, varieties, yield potential have changed, and in the past few years, the seed companies have started charging for replanting seed. So the cost of replanting used to be 8 to $10 an acre, whatever it cost for fuel, labor, equipment, things of that nature. Now we're looking at a figure of about $35 an acre, which is significant enough to get our attention. So with all these new parameters in mind, uh, we, we're just now completing some research, and it looks like on average uh, the threshold would be about 30% of the planted area occupied by three-foot skips or greater. 
So if we can assess that, and, and, and in this work, we collaborated with Dr. Jason Ward to see if we could, uh, versus manually, we could measure this with UAV. And it turns out that we can. Uh, that technology is still currently in development, and that would make it a lot quicker and a lot more precise in terms of making these decisions versus going out there and manually measuring. Uh, but if it's accurate and we can assess it visually, we'd say about 30% of the planted area occupied by the free food gifts more is generally the threshold where we would uh, want to consider replanting. All right. So extension recommendations have been to get your cotton planted sometime before, basically, we try to say by May 31st, sometime in that first week in June, yields tend to really start plummeting at some point. So in the insurance date, the first insurance date is May 25th, which is basically 10 days from today. So yeah. what's the outlook for the rest of the cotton planting window? Uh, can you talk about maybe some different strategies to help ensure better germination? Yeah, okay. Well, all right, so we have 10 days before our first crop insurance deadline. Uh, it depends on where you are in the state. Some folks may start back planting tomorrow. Um, they may have acceptable nighttime temperatures starting tomorrow. A lot of places it will be Sunday they can start back. Most growers that I've talked to have told me anywhere from three or four up to five and six days if they can have a good run with cooperative weather uh, and no major hiccups that they could get this crop planted before the crop insurance deadline. So before this week we were not behind. After this week I don't want to say we'd be behind but we can't afford any more lost time. Uh, or we will be late. So as you said, the first deadline for crop insurance is May 25th, and then you start losing a certain percentage per day into the end of May, then after that, you, you plant cotton uh, not covered by insurance. So typically, uh, once we get into the first week of June, it's very important that we focus on bold retention at that point. Uh, you know, at planting that late cotton loses its ability to compensate in time uh, in terms of, of, of yield potential. So we don't really want to, we can't really afford many losses due to insects and things of that nature. Uh, so preferably it would be irrigated land. We don't always have that option. Uh, we can use that to our advantage to help retain bowls if dry weather is a problem later in the summer. But outside of that, uh, we need to be extremely timely on insect management, proper fertility, not over fertilizing cotton, and uh, also with uh, growth regulators. Uh, we don't necessarily need to be aggressive, but what we do say is we just need to be very timely if a PGR is needed. Uh, so timeliness is very, very critical once we get into that first week of June. And beyond the first week of June, in most years, the risk starts becoming too great to effectively plant cotton um, with, with any kind of hope for it. Um, but before that, we can do it. Uh, ideally, like you said, we want to be planted at least in the month of May if we can help. So some, you know, as you said, some people have planted or done planting cotton. And so some of this cotton was up and growing and germinated before this cool weather set in. So what are some concerns, maybe thrips or some other concerns because this cotton's not really going to be growing, hasn't been growing this past week. Yeah, so if they planted before this cool snap, hopefully we they had a good stand before the cool snap occurred. Uh, if if the stand was in, in development, so to speak, if this cotton was still trying to emerge when we encountered this cool weather, they're going to need to evaluate it once we get on the other side of this maybe towards the end of next week at the latest and make a decision on replanting if they don't have good emergency. But let's say they had a good stand established before this cool weather. That This cool spell is going to drastically slow that cotton down. Uh, and, and it's an added stress. So that's when things like season disease come into play, all these other things. Nematodes can start working on it. Uh, quite well at that point. Uh, the 
main thing we can do is one, avoid any other practice that might further injure the cotton or delay maturity. Uh, and we want to be extremely timely with our uh, sprays or whatever action we need to take for prips. So a lot of the seed treatments uh, expire over a certain amount of time. Same thing for in furrow uh, treatment. So we want to make sure uh, as that first true leaf is protruding through the cotton leaf, we need to be out there looking for prips and, and take action very, very quickly if uh, action is needed. All right, let me, I want to uh, come back to replanting one question. So if sure. someone if someone needs to replant, they got there and there's skips and they feel, okay, this needs to be replanted. Are we recommending to just start over and replant the whole field or try and just try to get in there and drop the planter down in those spots and just replant spots, which could cause a little bit of differentiation in maturity or, or management down the road? All right, so a couple of different issues going on in that scenario. If it's, if it's just a certain area of the field that might need to be replanted, then by all means, we, we recommend only replanting that area and just in spot. In some cases, stands to be so poor, you have to replant the entire field. Uh, when the majority of the field comes into play, uh, we need to think about things like herbicides. And Dr. Charlie Cahoon has done uh, some really good work looking at herbicide interactions and replanting, things of that nature. And he can answer those questions quite effectively. Um, but if it's a spot replant, you know, typically what most growers need to understand is the variation in our fields in North Carolina, just with the variation in soil or what have you, it, we have one, maybe two weeks difference in maturity in the same field assuming cotton is planted and, and merges at the exact same time. So that much variation in the field is not abnormal. And so replanting cotton, especially if it's within two weeks of the original planting, for example, it doesn't really bother me in terms of maturity and, and how to manage that problem. Now, there have been scenarios where you have extremely early planted cotton mixed with extremely late planted cotton. What we say there is try to be uh, a little lax on your PGRs, at least initially. Let that cotton grow and set some fruiting nodes and things of that nature. Let it let the later planted cotton catch up, so to speak, uh, before we start hammering it with, with PGR. Uh, but that'll come later in the year. Weather will dictate a lot of that. And, and even in our plant date study, sometimes you'll see plant dates kind of move together or migrate together, depending on the, the weather throughout the summer. Uh, so at the end of the year, there, there may not be that much difference in terms of overall maturity. So it's less of a concern in most years than, than most people make it out to be, uh, just due to the variation that we have in fields in, in any way. All right. Is there anything else you think we need to cover or we want, you wanted to talk about that we haven't gotten to? I would just say, uh, you know, everybody's kind of behind and in a hurry now uh, trying to get this crop planted. Let's not neglect to evaluate stands of cotton that's already been planted and, and make a timely decision on replanting if needed. Uh, for stands that have already been established, like I said earlier, we just need to be incredibly timely on our thrift management and start watching that cotton. So the focus right now is going to be planting the rest of this crop, naturally so. But those are a couple of things that we don't need to just forget about until we're done planting cotton. There may be some fields next week that need to be sprayed for thrift. And if so, we need to direct our attention to that. And thank you again, Dr. Collins, for your time today on our podcast. And Dr. Collins mentioned the NCSU Cotton Planting Calculator. And if you just Google NCSU Cotton Planting Calculator, it'll be the first thing that comes up. And that's a, a great uh, resource that those fellows have created to help you make better decisions on, on planting and when to plant and maybe when to hold off. And uh, please share this podcast with anyone you know who grows cotton. If you have any questions about adequate stands and replanting decisions, reach out to your local cooperative extension agent. And as always, 
Thanks for listening to Crop Sense because if it's not making money, it's not making sense.